welcome to KCF. I'm William. I'm Sam. And I'm Ellis. We're so glad you're joining us. This is our 12th and final week of our Experiencing God campaign. We hope everyone finishes strong in their workbooks and with your ecclesia groups. We'll also announce the winners of our Memory Verse contest in a few weeks. In today's study, Pastor Mark will be sharing about Now What? But first, the Matsumoto family will lead us into our celebration of Advent as we focus the week on peace. Jesus came to give to all of us. In the midst of all the busyness, follow the star as it takes you on a journey to experience the peace of God this week as we celebrate the coming of our Savior, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Luke 2, 13-14 Merry Christmas, everyone! Thank you, Matsumoto's. That was great. Let's continue to focus on celebrating Jesus as we take time to worship Him. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone watching this video. And thank you that we get to hear Pastor Mark's message. Um, Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let's go to worship.
I'll trust in you. With all I am, I'll live to see your kingdom come. And in my heart, I pray you let your will be done. Until I see you face to face, the grace amazing takes me home. I'll trust in you I will live to love you I will live to bring you praise I will live a child Well, thank you again for tuning in and Merry, Merry Christmas. Can you believe that Christmas is just a few days away? You know, and I hope, I hope that you are celebrating Advent and really the coming of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's also really hard to believe that we are in the final week of our life-changing series, Experiencing God. You know, I have shared in the past um, about my visits to Elijah House, you know, that wonderful uh, center where you go and receive prayer ministry. Um, 
it's a, it's a time and a place where you allow God to get to the root causes of things that cause problems. You know, to break strongholds, bitter roots, and things like that, that really mess up your life. And you know, our times in Elijah House have really brought much healing and breakthrough in my life. And you know, I experienced God in a very loving and yet really powerful way as He brought about much inner healing in my life. And you know, after a week of receiving prayer ministry, you know, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to leave such a loving and nurturing place. And upon leaving, thoughts enter my mind like, now what, God? You know, what's my next steps? And you know, I hope I can continue to feel this freedom and this sense of, of peace when I return home. And, you know, on that flight home, I realized, um, I realized just how much God uh, did so much inner healing in my life and broke strongholds and lies. And what I needed to do was just take steps that He had led me to walk in, in that healing and that freedom. And, you know, as we begin our final weeks of, week of our adventure in experiencing God, I want to encourage you, really encourage you that, like my times at Elijah House, this is not the end, but really a beginning. It's the beginning of walking in everything God has taught you and led you in. All the applications to your daily times with God and really to grow even more in experiencing Him. And my prayer is that you would continue to experience that amazing love relationship with God every single day. You know, that you would walk with a new perspective, looking where, where God is at work, and then accept His invitation to join Him. And, and when you do, and it stretches your faith, uh, you would believe and, and say to God and, and make the adjustments, you know, say, you know, God, yes, I'm, I'm in, and then make some adjustments in your life that you need to to join God. And as you walk in obedience, you're experiencing God uh, grows in even greater ways. And I pray that the seven realities of experiencing God would be your experience from now until you see Jesus face to face in your real home, your true home in heaven. This may be the end of our campaign, but it's really, really a beginning for every single one of us as we venture forth and continue to experience God. And I want to encourage you, especially those, I want to encourage those of you who, you know, maybe you're, you're not up into the final unit yet, that you're kind of lag behind a little. I know it's tough to keep up and to do five lessons a week, so please don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Keep going. Go through the entire 12 units because it's really powerful. So keep going, keep growing in experiencing God. And this week, what I would like to do is just encourage you, all of you, um, just to encourage you to keep going and share some things that we all can do moving forward. And I hope as you finish your workbooks that you would keep these things in mind and make this a real beginning of your next season in experiencing God. All right? So the question is, now what? First thing is this. Make a habit to get into God's Word, the Bible, every day. You know, just as you've experienced throughout this series, getting in and staying into God's Word is vital. Make it a habit. Schedule a time every day. Just as you made time to get into your workbooks every day, continue to do the same in the Bible. God has so much more that He wants to reveal to you if you would give Him the opportunity. And as Joshua was preparing to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land, you know, Joshua in the Bible, not Joshua Oyatomari, but as Joshua was preparing to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land, God had one very simple instruction for him. In Joshua 1, verses 6 to 9, we read, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. 
then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And God tells Joshua that he is the one who's going to be leading the people into the land that he promised. So to be strong and courageous. And the key would be obeying all, that, all the instructions Moses gave to him. And so how was Joshua to do that? The word says, by studying the word of God and obeying everything in it. And if he did that, God said he would be prosperous and successful. And God's instruction to you and to me as we move forward is exactly the same. Be strong and courageous by getting into his word and obeying everything. And if you do, you will experience God in a greater way, his presence and his power. So, you know, make it a habit to get into God's word every day. And, you know, you can join me and use the five-day-a-week Bible reading plan. You can get that from our website, all right? Second thing, connect with God through prayer regularly. You know, one of the best ways to keep motivated and, and to prevent from slipping back is to regularly connect with God through prayer. It keeps you focused on Him, and it reminds you to follow Him throughout the day. Remember, prayer is more than just going to God with a, with a list of needs or concerns. Prayer is a two-way communication through which God also speaks to you. How amazing is that? God wants to talk to us. And Daniel in the Bible made it a real habit to pray three times every single day. He experienced the closeness, the presence, and the power of God. Daniel heard that there was a law that was going to be enacted that every person was to bow down to the king and bow down and pray to the king only. Daniel knew he couldn't do that. He wouldn't be able to follow that. So what did he do? Daniel 6.10. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home, knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Daniel connected with God, as was his regular practice. And we read in Daniel 9 that God connects with Daniel sends an angel, the angel Gabriel, to speak with him. Make it a habit, a regular practice to connect with God through prayer. You know, one of the things that I did uh, to help me was to set alarms on my phone, my watch, you know, for 7 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 7 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, and 9 at night to stop and prayer. And, you know, it was a really great reminder to stay focused on God throughout my day. You know, God will meet you right where you are, and He will speak to you. So connect with God through prayer regularly. The third thing, follow through and do the things God has prompted you, invited you to in these past 12 weeks. You know, I've learned that the longer I take to respond to God's leading, the easier it is for me to forget or not to do anything at all. Isn't that true? Every day in our workbook, you know, it ended with and it ends with an opportunity to respond to God's prompting. I want to encourage you, go back, you know, and, and look at what God has led you to do. And then, you know, take steps of faith, take a step of obedience and follow through in what you wrote in your workbook. You know, when I read through the parable of the sower and the seeds, I was, I was reminded on how important it is to follow through when we sense God's leading. You know, in Matthew 13, 20 to 21, uh, Jesus was telling the story and he says, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once received it with joy, receives it with joy. 
but since they have no root, they last only a short time. And when trouble or persecution, even busyness, I would add, comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. It's so easy to forget what God was prompting to do, what we was inspired to do, as, you know, as busyness and all the things, we get caught up in all the other things. It's exciting when we sense God's prompting, His invitation, and, and you know what? The key is to follow through and do what He is prompting you to do. And you know, as you look back over the weeks of this series, you will see how often God speaks to you through His Word and, and you know, as you go through the workbook, that He's going to speak to you and prompt you to do something. Follow through. And as you do, you will experience God in greater and deeper ways, right? The fourth thing, stay connected to our church family, even as we move to a new season as we follow God. You know, this week's memory verse is, is really important one. It's Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. You know, and let us consider how to spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as are in the, in the habit of, our some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. It is so important to encourage each other to follow and experience God in greater ways. You know, to, to cheer each other on as people take steps to follow through on God's prompting and invitation to do something. It's so important to stay connected to God's family, His ecclesia, His church. The, the circumstances of all that has been going on over the past year or so has, you know, unfortunately has made it really challenging for us to stay connected as a church, especially if we look to do it in the same way we've always done, primarily meeting together weekly at a worship service. The exciting thing is God has been leading us, maybe slower than some of us would like, to new ways, new wineskins for us to stay connected because that's so important. And, I, and I'm going to be sharing more about this and really more frequently as we begin the new year. So stay tuned for that. But just know that God is leading us in His timing to new wineskins. And my encouragement to you is to take Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 to heart and consider Really consider, be open to new ways God is leading us to spur each other on and stay connected with God's family. You know, consider the ways in which God has been leading us to do so, even in the midst of all that's gone on in the past years. You know, I look and I hear, and I hear about husbands and wives are connecting with God through prayer in greater ways. I've never heard of parents having great conversations about God with their kids than ever before. I mean, never before have I heard about all these parents having these great conversations. That's exciting. Families are taking time to connect with God through, the fa through family ecclesia times in the Word, in prayer, now in experiencing God and in our Advent celebration. It's amazing. It's great. Families are worshiping together more. Small groups of people, ecclesias are gathering in person and remotely, and are growing closer to God and each other. We have all grown closer to God through series such as Jesus' blueprint for his disciples, you know, going through the Sermon on the Mount, and now in experiencing God. And, and he's doing so even through these weekly broadcasts. You see, God calls us to stay connected with his family, and he's leading us to ways to do so beyond anything that we've ever known, to ways where we can continue to do so no matter what is happening in the world around us, to be pandemic-proof, persecution-proof, to be a church without walls. So, you know what? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Stay connected as best you can, knowing that God is leading us. Keep praying and stay tuned, all right? You know, Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God works, God causes all things 
to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We are literally seeing this verse come to life in our lives and in our church families right now. God is working things together, all things, the good things, the bad things, the challenging things, all for our good, to see his highest purposes accomplished right here in our midst. It's happening. So, so what do we do? We patiently trust God. We do what we see and what we know he is calling us to do. We keep experiencing him. We allow the seven realities to become realities in our lives and in our church. And you know, as we move forward from this series, let's make getting into the Bible every day a priority and a habit. Let's continually connect with God through prayer. And you know, as God speaks, let's follow through when we sense God's leading and invitation to do something. And then let's stay connected to our church family, not looking back, not looking back to the way things were, but to look ahead where God is leading us and, and really consider, really consider and be open, really, to how we can encourage each other and stay connected. These are exciting times. It's exciting because, because God is making himself so real to all of us who will truly take time to pursue experiencing him. So keep moving forward in your pursuit because the honest truth is the best is yet to come. All right, let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that you have led us to experiencing God. All through this year, you have been with us, whether it be through the Sermon on the Mount and now in this Experiencing God workbook, God. And I know as we engaged with you that you have drawn us closer and closer to you. I pray, God, that you would take all that we have learned, we have learned this year and that you would move it and you would move us forward to all that you have for us. I look forward how you are going to create ways for us to stay connected, the new wineskins that you have, the new wine, the new ways that you have for us to operate and to function as a church, God, your church. So thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. I pray for every single person to just uh, make experiencing God, uh, that it will become a full part of our lives, that for those who haven't finished, to keep pressing forward. Thank you, God. Thank you for your kindness in your goodness toward us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are behind in your workbook, keep pressing on. It's so worth it. Don't forget the scripture memory contest. You know, we'll uh, get those things in. Just go to the website, get all the instructions for that. We'll be getting the prizes to you very soon. So get on it, all right? Join us for a time, a special time of worship on Christmas Eve. We're going to have a special Christmas Eve broadcast that's going to premiere at 4 o'clock on that day. All right? So join us. And thanks so much for those of you who contributed to the Aloha Angel Tree Project. You are a blessing. All right? Thank you, Joshua Yadamari, for, for spearheading that, that you, you, uh, you heard God's invitation and you grabbed hold of it. You made adjustments in your life. And you walked in it. So proud of you, Josh. Thank you so much. And, you know, Merry Christmas to you all. And I'll see you in a few days on Christmas Eve, all right? Right here on our YouTube channel, premiering at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve. All right? God bless. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Pastor Mike. That is a great, 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 great message. Yes, we have learned so much about what it means to experience God in our everyday lives. Keep tuning in to our broadcast and invite others to watch too. We'll be having a special Christmas Eve broadcast that will premiere on Christmas Eve at 4 p.m. Boy Standard Time right here on YouTube. Join us and bring along your friends and family to be a part of your ecclesia as we celebrate Jesus' birth. 
Also, coming up is our Memory Verse Contest winner announcement. Start getting your entry forms ready to send in by January 9th. The forms are right on our website. And if you haven't been able to keep up each week, it's okay. You still have a chance for me to win the $30 grant. Just kidding, you still have a chance for you to win at the $30 grand prize. You can do it, kids. Thank you all for continuing to send in your tithes and offerings. It's such a huge part of walking in faith, honoring God first with our finances, trusting in Him, and experiencing His faithfulness. There are three ways to give. One, through the KCF website, two, through the Church Center app, and three, in the mail. You can find all this info as well as lots more about KCF and things that we've been doing on our website at kcfway.org. Yes, check out our Blessed Business page on there too. A lot of the local businesses that we've been praying for and supporting have gift cards. So if you need a last minute gift, Go see them and get your gift cards. Please stay connected with us by subscribing to our email list on our website, following us on Instagram and Facebook, and subscribing right here to our YouTube channel. Click the red subscribe button, the thumbs up, and the bell so that you know when we post a new video. Finally, keep celebrating Advent as family ecclesias. It's such a special time to rejoice together in Jesus. He is the reason for the season. Thank you for joining us. God bless. Bye. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to tune on on Friday. Bye. I think I stuff in my teeth. No, Thank you, Pastor Martha. It's a great, 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 message. God bless you. We'll see you on Friday. Bye.